In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the perspective tool to draw this rhodium bridging chloride complex. So up here is the image of the complex we're trying to draw. So first we're going to start with cyclopentane ring, and then we're going to draw a circle inside. So go to this shape tool, select the circle, click and drag to make a circle in the size you want. Then you can use the box tool to move it into the center of your ring. You'll notice we have to make it a bit smaller, so I'm going to look for the arrows on the side and push it in until it's nicely centered. Once I've done that, I'm going to select the whole thing and then use the perspective tool. And so with the perspective tool, you can see that it takes everything I did and it distorts it to make it look like it's coming in and out of the paper. This tool is a bit tricky. You have to play with it a little bit to get it to really look how you want. So I'm working on making this look like the ring on the top. So now that looks pretty good to me. Now I'm going to add wedges. And so you notice that second one is flipped the wrong way. If I click on it again, it'll flip it in the right direction. So now that perspective is pretty good. Maybe my rotation is a little bit off, so I'm going to rotate it a hair. And now I want to make the second ring. So the easiest is if I just duplicate what I did. So copy and paste, control C, control V, or you can, now I'm going to go and right click on this and do flip vertical. So this will now flip it to look like the bottom ring. I want to change my dashes and wedges, so I'm going to make them normal bonds again. And then I'm going to add a straight wedge and another edge for the second one. You'll notice the rotation's off a little bit, so I'm going to change that, maybe work on the perspective a little bit again. So you can see the perspective tool is a little bit touchy. I'm going to rotate it a bit, a bit again to get it a little more good, and then a little more perspective. And that's looking pretty good now. For the next part, I'm now going to make the frame that goes between the two, so I'm going to move these out of the way a bit. And here you should be able to, you can click and drag, or you can just click and it'll pick an automatic size for those bonds. And sometimes you can see I just click more so that they go where I want them to be, and then I'll move them a bit. So now I have an extra one. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to delete that one. You can see that my framework is pretty close to the original. But I'm now going to use my box tool. Right now it has the whole thing selected, so I'm going to unselect the right, and then I can click and drag to get them a bit closer to what I want. Okay, once I have that, I can bring my rings in closer. So here you can see the bond on the top one is in front and you want it in back. So you hold over that bond, click on it, go to Object, Send to Back and say flatten since we used a perspective tool. The thing this means is you won't be able to go back and use the perspective again to change it. So you want to make sure your perspective is how you want it. And then for the other one you actually want to bring it to the front. So again click on it, go to object. And for some reason it's not coming to the front. So I can click on the other object instead. And if I do object, send to back, flatten, now it allows me to send that ring. And now we just have to add our other atoms, so chlorides, type them in with the text tool. And then our rhodiums. And then our last thing is using the 
alkyl groups, so the R groups. And so these are written so they are specified they could be at any position. So for this, you can use a bond tool as if it's a line and just draw a line out. We'll do the same for the bottom one. And then we'll use our text tool and add an R group. So this picture looks pretty good. If we want to be even pickier, we can actually move our chlorides a little bit. It looks like they brought them in to make it look a bit more bridging. But otherwise, that looks pretty good. The one thing that's in the presentation that you might notice is if you click on View and then Show Chemical Warnings, now you can see these red things, which are mostly meaningless for inorganic chemistry because we have a lot of more unusual bonds. And so I typically just turn that off. So go to View unclick show chemical warnings, and then you have a nice picture. Thanks for listening.